All right, people, welcome, 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 welcome. This is episode 245 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and over here, I try to talk about everything about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. Everything under that umbrella, I try to throw a couple of things sports-related into the mix as well. But today, we're going to talk more about the Georgia Southern Eagles, the Atlanta Falcons, they're doing pretty good right now as far as the NFL is concerned. They're, they're under 500, but they're playing pretty well. But um, I have to talk about my Georgia Southern Eagles on this one. It, and it started a few days ago, and I'm going to run with it. So this episode is going to be mostly about the Georgia Southern Eagles. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy Hopefully understand. Hopefully you guys will understand where I'm coming from, and we'll just go from there. Uh, if this is your first time here, welcome. I try to do these things, you know, on a live basis, but things has been changing. So I don't do the podcast uh, live uh, anymore. It's it's just much easier for me to go ahead and just pre-record it. Um, I made that declaration when I was talking on my uh, one of my last videos on YouTube. Also put it in the community tab on the YouTube channel that the fact that, you know, this is a one man show. You know, I do all of this on my own. You know, I do all the editing. I do all the, you know, the the content, the ideas, the uploading, all this stuff. It's just a one match. I don't have anybody behind the scenes. It's just me. And it's just easier for me to just go this route. So if you are listening to this on YouTube, uh, on the, the pre-recorded side, that's cool. I really appreciate it. But I also can be found on um, iTunes, Google Play um soundcloud uh i think i'm having a problem with uh google uh podcast and soundcloud so you, it may not upload over there but definitely it's gonna be itunes spotify and i'm also going to be on uh also going to be on anchor so if you guys could check out the, the stuff on that avenue we much much appreciate it and uh we're just gonna get right into this uh i recently did a video on Sean Pell kissing um, tight end slash defensive end for the Georgia Southern Eagles. And I really feel that he needs to play on defense. They've been holding him back, having him on offense, playing tight end, which personally I think he's much suited on defense. I showed the highlights on that video and the proof is in the pudding. And I think that he should play defense like, immediately but this is not what this video is about this was just the beginning of how i really you know feel about the georgia southern eagles and it it is kind of not like the beginning because we've been on a downward slope pretty much all season we had a couple of games that we looked pretty good and then the rest of the games we were like scratching our heads like what the hell is going on Georgia southern needs an identity change we really need an identity change what we're doing right now is not working and I'm not blaming none of the coaches because they these coaches are pretty much put in a bad spot at this point. You know, we lost Coach Chad Lunsford and uh, we have an interim coach and Coach Witt is doing the best he can being uh, the interim coach. And I can't knock him for what he's doing. But, the you know, this is a re- uh, results based industry. And if you don't come up with the results, I mean, you know, that that's just how it's going to be. You're going to be judged off those results. Now, I think. If this was a be- a different time, he would ha- was much more better to prepare for being a head coach. Things would probably be different because I don't. I, to be honest, I don't think he would have the coordinators under him if it if he wasn't thrown into the situation. But the fact that he he was thrown in the situation and he's basically going to be a placeholder until the end of the season. And uh, unfortunately, after what I saw on the on the South Alabama game. It's unfortunate, but I don't think that he's going to be retained as coach of the Georgia Southern Eagles. I mean, it was a fast turnaround or whatever the case may be. And, uh, it, you know, it was a pretty overwhelming for the players. And uh, you just saw what happened when South Alabama just ran through Georgia Southern. It was not a pretty sight to see. So, therefore, I feel that at the end of the day, we're going to end up having a new coach, and I think that's what we need. We need a new identity. What we're running right now, the athletes we have on our team, um, I think we could do better. Um, do I feel that we could play as good as Coastal in Appalachian State? Maybe. Probably not. It's a stretch, but I think we can. But we just don't know because the the proper um, 
implementation of play calling and training is not available for them. And I'm not saying that the coaches are doing anything wrong or anything. I just think with today's game, the way the game is played now, I do feel that the coordinators and in some cases the coaches are not caught up with the times, especially on offense. I don't think they're caught up with the times at all because we're still trying to run up, you know, a option a style offense, which right now, you know, everybody is pretty much caught on to it. You know, not too many teams still run it. And the ones who do run it are, I'm not going to say they're not successful, but it's a limit to what they can do in they, this day and age. I mean, when we were in the FCS, when we was in one double A, you know, that type of offense was like, you know, you know, it was, it was very potent. But now when you're playing with the big boys, you see what's going on now. And I'm not saying get away from the option completely, but that is going to be something that's going to be used sparingly. It has to be used sparingly because it's a real good way in college to throw off a defense. But when they're watching and they're looking for it, it's not much you can do but, you know, uh, be successful with it because if you're not successful with it you're going to have a long day because what's going to happen is the other team is going to tee off on you and then they're going to find a way to get through on off um, get through uh, our defense and when they get through the defense we're going to be behind and once we get behind it's very hard to catch up running that type of offense it's just it's just really hard to do so um that's just something we have to be mindful of when we're running this style of offense i think now i i I personally i'm not opposed to running a pistol style offense i'm not opposed to that um as far as defense goes i would like to see a multiple uh four three um i think we still run a three four which is fine because you have uh the athletes for it we switch over to a four three we get some better linebackers because the line i mean not linebackers but better down linemen because, like I said, Sean Pell Kissing could easily be the, a defensive end easily and, and play off the edge. You know, you can get a couple other guys that could play that. I think with the talent we have, I think we'll, we'll do uh, wonders, in my opinion. When you see other teams evolve, like uh, Appalachian State, which ne- not necessarily ran this, this type of offense when they were in the FCS or when you see Coastal just doing what they do, and, you know, I was watching the game tonight, and I was, like, really upset. And I'm not going to lie, because you see these offenses that are ran in the Sun Belt. And I'm not just talking about Coastal and, and App State. You you see what uh, the uh, South Alabama's doing. You see what Troy is doing. Hell, even in some cases, you see what Georgia State is doing. We're behind the times with the type of offense we're running. We're still trying to run with the athletic quarterback that's not necessarily a thrower, and we're just trying to use a lot of speed, which is great. I don't have a problem with using speed, but we have to try to get some plays that actually work in this day and age. Like the the option is a beautiful thing to run. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's it's the worst offense in the world. It's a beautiful thing when it works. The problem is you you can't get it to work in this day and age. Too many teams now are like hell bent on, you know, stopping that style of play. I mean, Georgia Tech just went through a whole identity crisis and had to flip over to what they've been doing because it was not working, even though Paul Johnson has been doing his thing when it comes to actually coaching teams. And he got he, he, they had some success in the ACC, but after a while it started to run its course. And around the same time that it started to run its course was around the same time Georgia Southern started having woes with their option play as well because teams start to catch on to it. It's cool to see. It's, it's great to watch it. And when it's ran, it's beautiful. But when you're looking at the scheme of things, it is not sustainable at this point. I think we need to start being a little more aggressive, throw the ball down the field. We need to get some of our players involved. And, um, and, and, and you know, like, Personally, I think Cam Ransom, you can go ahead and get him out there. Get him uh, so a lot of reps for the rest of the season. Let him throw the ball down the field more. It showed that we were doing a lot better when we started to throw the ball against South Alabama. We need more of that. He needs more reps. He needs to do more of that. And that's not to take anything away from Justin Tomlin, but we've seen what Justin Tomlin can do. And it's not, you know, I, I don't like the knock on these kids or whatever because they're out there to play. 
But when you see what they're capable of doing, you may want to try another alternative and try to get these guys out there to win some football games. Uh, I would love to see um, Cam Ransom actually run a pistol style offense, and that, and I know, and, and that that's just my thing. I'm gonna tell you now. I mean, some people may not like it; they may not agree with it. But I'm big on running the pistol. I am. I, I love the pistol because running the pistol, you can still run somewhat of an option play option game out of it. And like I said, I'm not against that. I'm okay with running the option out of the pistol, but we need to have more of a passing game. And then you have guys like Amari Jones, you have J.J. McAfee, you have guys like um, Derwin Burgess. You got guys that are playing on this team that can actually move the ball if give the, given the reps and the chance to actually throw and catch the ball. Uh, same thing with Sam Kennison. He's another. He played quarterback in high school, but it looks like he can play some receiver if need be. You know, um, you have Bo Johnson at tight end, Chase Hancock at tight end. I'm not even going to go there with the running backs because we got plenty of those guys. Even when the guys that are there now, just once they graduate, we're still in a good position with running backs. When you go back and you look at on defense, we're out. Uh, I mean, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Derek Canteen is out with a with a chest injury. He'll be back. Uh, Najee Thompson will be back. And and I'm gonna tell you right now, Najee Thompson just needs to go and stay on defense. Let him play defense. Let him play special teams because he does a phenomenal job of playing defense uh, at cornerback. He does a great job. I love this. Love seeing him out there. Hell, I don't mind putting him on offense every now and then as well. But keep him on. Uh, keep him at cornerback. Him and Derek Canteen. Listen, you're talking about a good duo right here. Derek Canteen and Najee Thompson will be phenomenal next year in that secondary. There's no doubt in my mind. They'll be excellent for the the secondary. So just keep that in mind, and we'll just leave that right there. Um, as far as the other guys up front, Josue, um, all the other guys that are up front, uh, I think Kevon Glenn is going to come back. Kadri Jackson's going to be there. Um, you still got the kid from uh, the other kid from uh, Oregon came in number thirty two. I can't remember his name. I think his last name Johnson. I, I I do apologize. He's going to be there. Um, you got guys, and, and like I said, Sean Pell kids can just go and play defensive end. You got guys here that if any coach comes here to the coach, you got the talent. You have the talent. You know, we need this shakeup. You're going to have the talent to do great things with this team, but we just need the right offense. We need a stout. De- and one thing, the defense is really not that bad. The secondary did take a hit, but when you look at a defense that's constantly going back out on the field, constantly going back out on the field because the offense is not moving the ball, they, they can't stop, but they can't hold offenses forever. They just can't. We need a team that can give us a good six, seven, and I said six because six is six uh, play drive is not bad when you're scoring, but six, seven, eight, nine, ten play drive, thirteen, fifteen play drive. If we can get those type of that type of production and put points on the board, the defense is just going to play just totally different. I mean, that's just how it is. They're going to play different because they know they got a lead to protect. They're not going out there saying, "Oh, here we go again. We got to deal with this." They're going to have a lead to protect. So this is why we need those guys out there to produce. And I personally think that right now this season is a wash. I hate to say that, but that's just like what I was saying before. This season is a wash. Put all those guys out there. Let them play. Show, show, show us what they got. Put them out there and let them play. And that shows what they'll be capable of next year. And, you know, so, like, it, I, I don't know what coach is going to be here. Hell, I, we don't even know. Coach Whitley might might still retain the job. We just don't know. But at least we got these guys, the reps, and the, the, to, to do that, the, to learn and progress and be better. And at the end of the day, that's all that you can ask for because this is the type of things we need because it's about to be a turnaround. It's about to be a big turnaround here with George Southern. It's going to be a big turnaround and it, it, I think it starts with the players who want to be here, guys who are going to be capable of leading, 
Cause you know, I I think guys like a, a Sean Pell kissing. It, just think about it. Let's step back for a second. You got guys like um, Bradley Glenn, J.D. King. Uh, I think Randy Wade, C.J. Wright. Uh, I think Logan Wright. I think all these guys. Let me let me look this up while I'm here. Let me see. Logan Wright. I think Logan Wright is going to be a senior. So with that being said, now we're looking at a situation where all these guys are going to be gone. We need guys that's going to step up and going to play. We, we're going to need the guys that are going to step up and, going to, and not only just play, but lead. You know, so... With that being said, you looking like a guy looking at guys like a Sean Pell Kissing. You looking at a guy like Cam Ransom. You know, Jalen White. Uh what's his name? Um Gerald Green. You know, I think Amari Jones is I think this is his last year as well. So you you looking at guys that can step up and be leaders. They're at Canteen. I think Najee Thompson said he has another year eligibility. I want him to come back and play. I think that kid is probably going to be playing on Sundays if somebody's watching him because he's he could do a little bit of everything. He'll be a big asset for a team. So when you look at these guys that are possibly leaving next year, these are the guys that need to be stepping up, and I want to see these guys step up and do what they have to do because right now, we are in a situation where, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen with this team. We don't know what type of offense. But what we do know is the personnel that we have here and see if this personnel is, is more than capable of turning things around, not only just with wins and losses, but just production. Even if they go out there and lose every game from here on out, if they're, if they're able to uh, go out there and – show that they could play some ball. They can move the ball downfield, make the games competitive. I think that right there is a huge, huge factor into going forward with this team and going forward with this program. Because with Jared Benko, the AD, I think there's going to be a big shakeup. There's going to be a really big shakeup. We saw it in basketball. We see it in volleyball. We see it in soccer. We see it in the golf you know, program. Football is the only one that has not been touched yet by Jared Benko since he's been here. In my opinion, I could be wrong. Women's basketball has been changed. I I, I don't know if he had that many coaching changes, but whatever that he's been putting, implementing since he's been here, has been working because every other program has been doing great. Even the rifle team has been doing well. The rifle team. It's time for Georgia Southern football to get back into where it needs to be. It's, it's just it's just time for it. I can't wait to see it happen, and hopefully we'll get that type of hire. Now, before I go, I want to ask, what kind of hire do you think we should have? You know, what kind of hire do you think we should have? Because, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, put it down in the comment section. If you're listening to this on Spotify, iTunes, or Anchor, you know, uh, let me know on Twitter. Or, hey, why not? Why? This is a good time to say so. Put a five-star rating on this podcast. You know, let people know what I'm doing over here. Let people know that, you know, that this is a good podcast to listen to. I try my best to... uh Talk about my favorite teams, Georgia Southern, Atlanta Falcons. But we're not going to talk about the Falcons today. We're talking more about Georgia Southern because it, it, it needs to be said at this point. We're looking at a big turnaround, even though that it's still midseason. We still have uh, we still have one, two, three, four, five more games left. But it, it, it's something that we need to look at, look and listen, look into. I think it's time. I think I think right now is the time to just watch these players, give these guys a shot to play some ball, 
give them an opportunity to get some reps in and see what we got going forward in the future because I think the future is very bright. We got a lot of good pieces here. We just need uh, leadership to implement the success, the path to success for these kids to have and and going forward because I, I think it's there. It's there easily. So, um, like I said, before I go, I'm going to uh, – let, I'm going to give you my final thoughts about what I think we should do with this uh, offense or defense, the team in general. Uh, and I'm just going to go with that. If you guys disagree, please let me know in the comments. If you agree, uh, let me know in the comments. If you're on YouTube, if you're on the other platforms, you know, you can always find me on Twitter. I'm always at, at VF Baller. You can find me there much, much easier, just like the name says, VF Baller. Check me out there. This is what I think we need. I talked about the pistol already, but the type of coach we need, I am not against a coach with some experience, a coach that's pretty much, that had a lot of experience in the Power 5 schools, probably on the, um, I ain't going to say on their last leg, but probably want to uh, come to a program and resurrect what they used to do at another program. I kind of get the sense like um, like Napier or uh, Butch Jones type. And I'm not saying those, th- those, that, those particular coaches, but the coaches who've been there at the big schools and bring that type of mentality down here to the other schools. You know, I mean, I can't think of a coach that comes to mind right now. So, um, but I want a coach that has Power 5 experience. FCS experience, I'm not against it. I'm not against FCS FCS experience because those type of guys, you know, FCS football is still good football. I don't care what anybody says. It's good football. And if you had a lot of success in the FCS, I don't mind bringing somebody up. But personally, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a coach per se that was at a big school. It could be an assistant coach. It could be an offensive coordinator. It could be somebody of that of that elk. Bring them down here to the Sun Belt. Let them implement their ways of what they did at the big schools and bring them in. Uh, I'm trying to think. A Gus Malzahn type. Ones who had success at a big college come down to the group of five. Um, some somebody of that I can't think of anybody that's out there now. I don't have a list, but somebody of that elk um, can actually come in and change the culture, frame the culture to what we have over here. Put guys in position to play their best at the position that they're good at. Somebody who's used to winning and want to win. Because I, I, I still believe that this conference is wide open. And not only that, this conference is got, probably going to expand. And I'm going to touch on that down the road. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but this conference is going to expand. And there's another reason why we need to be on the ball as far as trying to get better. Because if you got the teams that I think that's coming into this conference... It's going to be highly competitive. You think you think now that you know what App State, Coastal, Troy, Louisiana, Georgia State, you think those schools are already competitive? Yeah, they're, they're, they're some phenomenal you know teams and programs. But you're gonna have a you're gonna have some teams that comes in that's going to be hungry, teams that's going to come to this program that's going to want to play, and they're going to try to put put a footprint into the Sun Belt similar what Coastal has done so far in this conference you know Coastal was too much of nothing I remember playing Coastal when we were back in the FCS days 1AA days when I was at Georgia Southern I was at those games back in 05-06 watching the Chanticleers play against Georgia Southern and they weren't too much they weren't that good back then but you look now 15 years later they're trying to they're, they're they're knocking on the door to try to get a January five oh not January five but a a January uh bowl game. That's what they're trying to do. 
But because they evolved, they changed. They were hungry. They wanted to play. They, I mean, even Georgia State. Georgia State came in and they wanted to. They, they wanted to prove themselves. So if you have a James Madison or a Southern Miss or a Marshall, especially Marshall, you have those two schools come in and you think they're just going to come in and lay down. They're going to want to play. Georgia Southern cannot be sitting back here looking like, uh, okay, we're still going to play like it's 1999. Like it's like like it's two thousand. Adrian Peterson's maybe still coming to the games, but he's not coming through that door suiting up. You know the Greg Hills, the Jason Fosters. They're not gonna. They're not suit. And even if they suit up, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking nothing away from them because they're great. And I think they'll do good in the, in the league today. But those are those are talented kids that are like way beyond. Those are talented guys that was way beyond what we have today. The Ellisons of the world, Upshaws. You know, the Dominic Swopes. We don't have those guys now. Now, we do have good talent, but we can't live in those glory days now. We need to start bringing a new identity. Who's going to be that next great quarterback that's going to come in and throw for 2,000 yards, run for another eight, 900 yards? Who's going to be that quarterback for throw for 3,000? Who's going to be that running back that runs for 1,500? Who could be that receiver that's going to uh, catch 50 uh, receptions? Who's going to be that middle linebacker that's going to get 65, 70 tackles? Who's that safety that's going to get three or four interceptions? Throughout their college career yearly For the next 3-4 years Like a Derek Canteen A Monquavian Brinson or, or a Kendall Vildor We need a coach that bring, that can bring That type of mentality that, that can bring those guys in That want to come here Or bring the guys who are already here Bring them up To be those type of guys I honestly believe We get a coach that that is proven He doesn't necessarily have to be a retread He could be a coach that been in the Power 5 That never had a chance Or he could be a Power 5 coach That actually was successful Bring them in And we'll see what goes from there I, I that That's my personal beliefs Of what we need to, to have Y'all let me know what you guys think. I usually try to run this podcast anywhere uh, between 30 to 35 minutes. It's getting up to that point now. I think I said my piece about what we can do at Georgia Southern. I want to know what your guys' thoughts. I really want to know. If you are listening to this on YouTube, please hit the like button. Share this. Let people at Eagle Nation know what I'm doing over here. I did a new, different format. I'm not going to be going live. I'm going to do more of the pre-recorded stuff. I hope we, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you're on the podcast side, hopefully you can hit that four to five star, preferably five star rating. Let the guys know that this podcast is where it's at when it's talking about Atlanta Falcons and Georgia Southern uh, football and uh, everything under that umbrella as well. I'm going to continue to give this content to you guys over there on YouTube. I make daily videos about my two teams. You can go check that out. Hit the subscribe button over there. If you want to hit the subscribe button over here on the podcast side as well. So you will always get the content. I also have a Patreon if you're interested in looking at that. Highly, highly optional is not required, but I would not, you know, I am not opposed to you going to check it out and just see what I have over there. I want to close this out. We're going to be fine, everybody. We're going to be fine. Things are going to be a little rough for the next few weeks, next few months. But we're going to get a coach in here that's going to do something. I highly, highly believe that. I uh, I think Benko is going to make the right choice. And um, we're going to have somebody here. I just gave you my two cents who I think should be. I don't know how that's going to play out, but we'll see. All right, y'all. Y'all be blessed. See you guys on the next one. Peace.